standing up in San Antonio. This is According to Calvus. Coming to you on the 23rd of May, the year of our Lord, 2024. This is episode 641. It is going to be Thursday, so we're going to be speaking of Wednesday, day three, the RPT convention. As you may know, I've been serving on the temporary committee for the platform resolutions team. Been here since Sunday, and we completed our work in the temporary committee yesterday. Now, honestly, very happy with everything that's on the platform. Very happy with the resolutions that we got through. I had submitted a number of things on behalf of people from my district. And I got to say, I was grateful that I legitimately agreed with everything that was given to me. Uh, I wasn't successful on everything, uh, but that's okay because the committee rules. And then when the committee you know, makes a determination, it gets sent off to the convention. The convention has a final say. So temporary committee has got a solid uh, platform. I think it's better than what it was the previous time. There's still a couple little minor tweaks we're looking to get done in permanent committee because uh, it's been three marathon days, right? So on day three, uh, people started to get a little short and a little tired. So we kind of blitzed through the last couple sections just to get it done. That being said, the most contentious and the most troublesome issue this convention, just like the last three conventions, is convention of states. So I'm going to take the lion's share of this episode to kind of lay this out for your listening ears and how I'm hoping this is going to play out. And I'm in a position to make that happen. And I don't want to say it's just me, but I'm on the committee that's going to make this happen. And quite frankly, I'm the one that's going to be leading the charge to ensure that it happens. And I have lots of help. So that being the case, Uh, The subcommittee had removed COS, as I mentioned, on the recap from day one, I believe. On day three, meaning yesterday or Wednesday, if you prefer, the committee of the whole inserted it back in. It was a very close vote by committee standards of uh, 1814. So that's 32 votes. I'm assuming the chairman counted himself in one of those two. Don't know for sure, but... As far as that goes, very close. That means that we're entitled to a minority report. Now, when you do a minority report, that supersedes anything else having to do with that topic. And it goes to the front of the line. My intention is to plainly state we have good people, good, solid conservatives, good Christians, you know, whatever, good liberty lovers on both sides of this equation. Some are pro-COS, some are anti-COS. Those people should not be your enemy. They see the same problem. They see a solution. The solution is constitutional. We may just agree, or I'm sorry, we might just disagree that it's the proper time to execute it or that we have the correct team available to execute it which would be kind of my concern, but be that as it may. So we're dealing with a situation where what they're wanting to do in having a convention of states is completely constitutional. It makes complete sense. The problem is all is not as it seems. And I'm not sure who to blame for that. And I'm not sure that you really can and should blame anybody for that. It's just what it is. That being said, if you want to complain, you complain that we did a bad job raising our children for multiple generations. We did a bad job of protecting our culture. We did a bad job of raising good patriots. And that's why we're in the trouble that we're in. And this is a legitimate corrective solution. Unfortunately, I don't believe we have the team to pull it off. Again, pick a side. Either way, my solution is the minority report's going to put it back up and you're going to have the option, reinsert the plank, calling it for renewal, or delete the plank, which will let it expire. I'm going to call for a roll call vote on this. 
so that every delegate will be heard and every delegate will get a legitimate vote. And honestly, it's essentially a hand-counted vote. So for those of you folks that are worried about election integrity, this is the best way to ensure that we had a good, clean, accurate vote of the body of the convention so that when it's all done and over with, we will have a clear position out of the Republican Party of Texas. That's the best I can offer you. That is the best solution here. And I sincerely hope that once that is done, we'll put this issue to bed as far as a divisive topic for the next two years. In whichever side wins or whichever side loses, I hope you'd have a gracious, kind heart and work to educate people on either side of the issue Bring them up to speed. Make sure that they understand both sides. Make sure that they can have a legitimate discussion and argument where they have coherent understanding of what's all at play here. And then let them make a decision. But then you have to respect those people and their decisions. And to me, that's the most heartbreaking thing. It's not like anybody here is advocating murdering children in the womb. It's not like anybody here is advocating uh, you know, bombing Iran unprovoked or something like that to where you can be legitimately worked up about starting world war three no this is we're disagreeing about a solution to a problem we both agree exists and to me that's what everybody seems to forget don't worry about who's controlling the strings and who's pulling what that's all fine and dandy but the people that you're talking to in your hometown by and large those people believe this is a proper and legitimate way to fix it or they and they may disagree and say no i don't believe this is a good idea and this is the reason why but if we're not willing to listen to each other talk to each other educate each other on how this works and why it works we're only going to keep defeating ourselves we're going to spend all of our time in the circular firing squad this goes right along with the personality problem right Certain folks get bent out of shape because they don't like a specific person or their personality and they disassociate their accomplishments or their good work because that person rubbed them wrong or that person's a jerk or that person was mean. It kind of sounds familiar, right? We had a president, love him or hate him, that did exactly what he said he was going to do. Did he do a great job? Eh. Did he do a good job? Yes. Did he make mistakes? Absolutely. Is he hopefully have learned from those mistakes? Sure. And guess what? You get an opportunity to give him a second time at bat because quite frankly, every other option stunk. But instead of fretting over the fact that some people got their feelings hurt, instead of losing sleep over the guy who made some, let's call, serial mistakes when he was younger, hopefully he's not doing those same mistakes now, that other option is even worse by 10 manifolds, or I'm sorry, I, 10 times, let's just put <laughs> 10 times worse in my opinion. Again, put aside this petty bickerness, or bickering and bitterness, how about that? Not enough caffeine, folks, not enough caffeine. We have to focus on the issues in front of us, the problems that we can solve. So, going into day four, it is my plan to be the permanent committee member for the platform resolutions committee. And I will make sure that all the things that I carried through on the temporary committee get to the body. Secondarily, it is my intention to support getting my friend Jim Pickle back on the SREC for a second term. Once again, put aside the personality, put aside the one or two issues that you don't like. The guy's done solid work. He is worthy of a second term, and he's been leading the charge on a lot of important things. We wouldn't have gotten closed primaries without his good work, in my opinion. Same could be said of Maggie Witt. She's done a good job representing us in SD8. There's a definite difference between personalities and presentations, but I think they've both been solid in standing up for us in SD8. You know, and I've talked on and on multiple times on how I believe that Abraham George is the best choice to be the next chairman of the RPT. 
The Republican Party of Texas needs somebody that can work with everybody, needs somebody that has a personality, needs somebody that can fundraise, needs somebody that's not going to be bullied. We had that in Matt Rinaldi. Matt Rinaldi apparently has had his fill. I believe Abraham George is the right guy. That being said, if Abraham George is not successful, it is my intent to follow with Weston Martinez. I think both are good, solid guys. Now look, I already know there's a number of people. Well, Weston's pro-COS. My answer is, so what? So what? Is he going to kick you out if you're not pro-COS? Is he going to work against you if you're not pro-COS? I can't see that happening. But again, don't get hung up on a single issue, especially a single issue where we agree on the problem. It's just the solution that we're not in full agreement on. That's silly. That's counterproductive. That's damaging. At a certain point, you have to put aside your personal whatever and focus on the principles. What do we stand for? Your preference should not override everything else that's going on. That is a recipe for disaster. And unfortunately, we see that an awful lot lately. And and it makes me sad. With that, We're going to wrap it up. I mean, today is not even going to be as long as the other two. It's just, it's short. Updates coming out of San Antonio. Um, I'm trying to keep you all abreast of what's going on to the best of my ability of what I see and hear. I might have a much longer or more interesting episode for Friday morning and certainly for Saturday morning. But I'm going to do my best to get these little short updates in. Uh, Special shout out to my family for letting me come down here and investing a week's work of vacation to work my tail off. Um, and in addition to that, I want to thank the folks at uh, SDA, or I should say really Jim Pickle, for appointing me to this role. But for you guys trusting me to do a good job for you, which I believe I've done. And I look forward to uh, mingling and enjoying The last two days of the convention were, hopefully I'm not going to have to work my tail off all day. In either case, this has been According to Chaos. Hey, and do me a solid. Like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. Join me on the social media where you can follow the program there and, you know, invest 20, 30 minutes of your day, five days a week or whatever you're comfortable with to get the latest, uh, update or version of events that are playing out primarily in Cowan County, but really Texas as a whole. And uh, I, I do my best to keep it lively and entertaining while still, you know, dishing out uh, useful information. And that is how you can help me help you. And until then, I will see you on the other side.